Welcome back. You're probably aware that exports of U.S. beef set a record last year, and global markets continue to make a major contribution to the bottom line for all U.S. cattle producers. What you may not realize is how large the market is for exports of live cattle from the United States. And recently, one country opened the door to live cattle exports for the first time in more than a decade. Cattle and Cattle reporter Russell Nemitz brings us the story. The airport in Miami, Florida, is where a group of about 150 registered cattle were gathered, ready to check in for their first international flight bound for the South American nation of Ecuador. So this shipment of cattle to Ecuador is the beginning and brand new opening of a big market and a new relationship between Ecuador and the United States. And I'm actually quite excited to be a part of this. Ecuador history, they have a, a base in, in American cattle, especially in Brahman, and that's why we are trying to refresh our uh, livestock with a new Brahm, uh, Brahman uh, reproducers to fix our, to fix uh, the farm of small producers. We've been monitoring this all along, and it took us a while to get a protocol uh, finalized between us and, and Ecuador. That got finalized in December and the Ecuadorian government would really like to import over 30,000 head of animals over the next three years into this country. The first shipment to Ecuador included seven different beef and dairy breeds, including Brahmin, Angus, and Holstein. All of the details were managed by Renee Strickland of Strickland Ranch and Exports, a leader in the competitive world of livestock exports. Once a buyer and seller have made a, a commitment to each other to buy and sell, then I come into the equation. And my job is the logistics. You have a sale, now we gotta get them from point A, farm of origin, to the final destination. And that's my job to take care of every step in between those two farms. This has been a, a challenging export simply because we had cattle coming from 10 different farms or ranches. But we have some really nice cattle from Texas and Florida producers. And I'd like to give a shout out to those producers because they were all really nice to work with. Once the cattle were gathered, fully tested, inspected, and approved by both the USDA and the government of Ecuador, it was time to head to Miami to get ready to fly. They get their final inspection. Then we truck them to the airport where they are put into crates. And that's how you ship by air as these animals are put in crates. Uh, it's several head per crate depending on the weight and the size of them. It's mostly space more than it is their weight. Uh, these, these animals probably averaged anywhere from five to seven head per crate, depending on their size. While it's being filled, they have super good air conditioning packs, as we call them, inside the plane and from the ground that keep the plane nice and cool for the cattle while they're in there. And while we fly, we try to keep the cabin temperature as cool as we possibly can. Sometimes it's difficult when you have a lot of cows on, on board, but typically if they've got the the systems for it, it should be maybe 60, 60 degrees, something like that. On arrival in Ecuador, there was excitement as the cattle were unloaded from the plane and moved to a quarantine facility. Renee Strickland not only handles livestock exports, but is also a Florida cattle producer herself. So animal care is a top priority every step of the way when exporting cattle. To make a good livestock exporter, you've got two things that you need to have going for you. One, you better have a good attention to detail. And you'd have, to be a really good one, you better care about the animals. I think that's probably the most important thing is how you handle these animals. And if you care about them, and being a producer, I think that gives me an advantage over maybe some other exporters because I really know how to handle them. And if you do, those two things, pay attention to the small details because the devil's in the details in this business. And if you handle your animals like they're yours, it should make you a pretty decent exporter. My motto for Strickland Ranch and Exports would be simply never export an animal that you wouldn't own yourself. You export good animals, you make good business. People are happy and you've done your job. 
Those are words to build a good business by, both here at home and with customers around the world. I'm Russell Nimitz, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the live cattle export business and about the opportunities available, visit the website stricklandranch.com.